Would you like a little sneak peek of the next fable? Come on, let's go. What shall I do with it? Well, that's where you come in. I would love to hear what you think I should do. What you think I should do? What you think I should do? What you think I should do? Yeah. Uh oh, that's looking a tad pink. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. Yep. Dang. Here you can see our little lead test, and uh, this is the color detector. Uh, as much as I don't want it to be, that is saying that that is detecting lead in the paint. Boo! I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. The best laid plans. Am I right? Ugh. Why? Why lead paint? Why lead paint? <sighs> Why lead paint? Boo! Boo! <sighs> Coming face to face with a safety issue is not unheard of in Furniture Fables land. And while the pause button must be pressed on such a potentially hazardous fable, a new one can begin with its own lovely combination of challenges and just a hint of danger. Ah, here is my little dose of danger now. Looks innocent, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. This is a nearly antique chest of drawers I picked up for free, and big surprise, it was in pretty rough shape. The top had all kinds of issues. Light stains, dark stains, scratches. And the piece's veneer on its drawer fronts was very, very thin, and therefore chipped and failing. There were scratches over the entire body of the piece, and the inside of one of the drawers was quite a mess. It did have all of its original solid wood pulls, and there were two lovely hand-painted details. And so, after putting my fully leaded friend into storage, I moved this sweet little friend to the front of the Fables line, and I began. And I started with another lead test. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, positive for lead. This is not my day. <laughs> yes, definitely not my day. I was not all that surprised, and I wasn't as nearly disheartened as I was about that white sideboard. While that project might require a level of lead paint removal that might be beyond my abilities, we'll see, this little piece's leaded floral accents are more my speed. I removed all those original wood pulls and then I took a look inside. Thankfully everything was looking pretty good. Just a little bit of evidence of drawer grind. That's kind of standard. I gave the piece a good vacuuming and a wipe down with some simple green. Apologies for not catching the entire cleaning process. I know for some of us that's our favorite part, <laughs> but my sadly my camera died. But it wasn't that big of a deal for this one because then I got out this Blue Bear Multipurpose Coatings Remover that I had been wanting to try out. This is a relatively safer chemical stripper and it can be used not only on wood, but concrete, masonry, and metal. 
Using a chip brush, I applied a good coat of it over both of those floral paintings. Now, oh, I know this is kind of a sad thing to have to lose these details that someone added to this piece so very long ago, but I've got to say I stand with this decision. I can't knowingly send lead paint back out into the world where it could potentially chip or be sanded by somebody who didn't realize what it was. I added a layer of the stripper to all of the veneers. So that was the top, the sides, and all of the drawer fronts. And I let all of that sit for about 45 minutes and then I began to scrape. I started with our lead paint. You can see here how the chemicals have made the paint almost look blurry. That was how I knew there was a very good chance it had released. And success. Yeah, that's a pretty good clean scrape, I'm gonna say. Just that little bit of residue left and yeah, I think there we go, we're getting it pretty much. So this is the safe way to deal with lead paint. You want to strip it with a product that is made to deal with it. This gel encapsulates the lead, preventing any airborne particles. Actually, this company, Franmar, has another lead paint stripper that has an additive in it that will change lead into a non-hazardous compound. I think I need to get some of that. And as always, whenever you use chemical stripper, you must dispose of the scrapings in accordance with your local, state, and federal regulations. I continued on with my scraping, and if you're wondering why, why strip if you're going to need to sand anyway, and I definitely am going to need to sand, the answer is because it will help preserve those old, thin veneers. Whenever you sand a surface that has an old, uneven finish, you will probably find yourself spending more time trying to sand off a spot that is stubbornly holding on to whatever original top coat is still there. The problem comes when right next door to that spot that you are trying to, to sand off, you know, like a centimeter over, there's a spot where it is already gone. And the sanding, of course, will begin to remove the actual veneer. And you will get what is known as burning through or busting through the veneer. And that's always a real drag. So by stripping the veneer first, we increase our odds of having an even successful sanding. I don't think it's always necessary to chemically strip first, but in an older piece with very delicate veneers that you're trying to salvage some part of, it's definitely a must. Okay, I used some mineral spirits to clean the piece off, and then I let the piece dry completely before taking a very good close look at the top. So here you can see it's actually gotten a little bit better, but we obviously still have a lot of wear and tear showing. Hmm. Whenever I see an old piece of veneer like this, oh, I kind of go back and forth. Some people would go ahead and remove it, and work with what's underneath, uh, that's not the most ideal thing. Some people would remove it and replace it. Uh, that's a choice for sure, but it gets pretty expensive. But I had another design plan in mind that I like to use when I see old veneers like this. I'm sure you can guess what it is. <laughs> but let's see. So I sanded that top with 150 grit and then worked up to 220. And then I did the same thing to the body of the piece, removing that old dark finish and buffing out the scratches on the solid wood sections.
here from this bird's eye view, you can see the sanding transform one of the sides. Once the body was sanded, I carefully did the drawers, this time starting with a 180 grit and then going directly to the 220. I also sanded the top edge of the drawers and the sides, removing all of that super red stain. Then I used a foam abrasive to clean up that curved edge top, being really careful of the top veneer layer. Ah, okay, we are stripped and we are sanded and now it is time to glue. I was, however, out of craft syringes, so I headed over to my local A store where I saw these little guys. Oh my gosh, look how cute. Oh my goodness. You know, our flock is pretty depleted. Hmm, let's see. Bard Rocks, Buff Orpingtons, ah, oh, Rhode Island Reds, Brown Leghorn. Oh, that's a new one for me. Delaware. Okay, back to our dresser. You can see this top piece of veneer is loose at the front here. So I am going to use my new glue syringe to get this wood glue as far back and under that piece as I can. You can see I also have the piece on its back. So gravity is helping me. Might as well let it help you out there if you can. And so as soon as I had gotten as much glue as I could back and down, I put the piece back upright and I finished off gluing right up there at the front of the edge. And then I clamped it really, really well and wiped away all of the excess glue that inevitably always comes out once you start clamping. That was of course a bit of a job as you can see, I always tend to err on the side of too much glue. I think that's better than too little, but you also really do not want to leave any uh, leftover glue drips because then you're, you're gonna just have to sand those off and you don't wanna have to do any excess sanding, especially on a delicate piece. So you gotta get in there and, and wipe it up. There were a few other spots that were in need of gluing, and so I did those after the top veneer glue dried. Time to fill in all those little veneer chips on the bottom trim piece. I mixed up some Bondo filler and applied it to the bottom with a wood stick. Once that dried, I sanded that all back smooth very carefully. Ah, of course, it looks like we have a little foot also in need of repair. I grabbed my molding putty and I mixed it up equal parts of both colors of this molding putty. 
until it reached a consistent kind of soft yellow shade and then I shaped it around the intact foot. Once it was ready, I removed it and then I made sure that it fit on the wounded foot and that it covered that area where it was missing a chunk. Then I filled that with some Bondo, just enough. I really didn't want to use too much wood filler here and I set it into place and secured it with some painter's tape. Okay, let's see how we did. Okay, pretty good. Hmm, maybe a little bit flat though. I shaped my fill with my sander and then I took a good look and yeah, yeah, I decided it needed just a little bit more of Bondo. You can always do this. You can always add a little bit more if you didn't get it quite right. It's not a huge deal. So I just, did it again and this time I got the shape I was looking for. Okay, so let's talk about design plans. Here you can really see the huge difference in coloring between the frame of the piece and what looks like to me to be mahogany veneers. You can see just how much they relied on those super dark brown stains to make the piece look cohesive. Oftentimes I feel like I can hear some folks' voices in my head at this point. Why not truly restore it to what it once was? After all of that cleaning and stripping and sanding and gluing, this is what a furniture fabler is dealing with. There are still stains that won't sand out, there are scratches that won't buff out. There are, of course, multiple veneer chip repairs showing there's a foot repair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so while recreating that original look sounds nice, it would be quite a task. And you have to ask yourself if that work in time is worth it. I didn't feel like I would get a return on such an investment. And I also kind of liked the idea of giving this sweet little dresser a more modern, soft, tonal, neutral look. And so I got out the paint <laughs> because the paint's gonna help us out big time on this one. This is Algonquin by Fusion Mineral Paint and I am going to use it to help me create that soft, modern, tonal look while hopefully also saving as much as I can of those old veneers. On this little top drawer front, I applied it in full strength and then I wiped it back. Here on the larger drawer fronts, I'm going to go ahead and use a 50-50 water and paint mix because I was worried I wouldn't be able to wipe it back in time before it started to really dry up. Algonquin has quite the following as a paint wash. It just has such a great tone for this job. And I had a hunch it was going to be really extra fabulous over this rosy mahogany. After I finished that bit of paint washing, I added Algonquin to the frame in full strength and then I did the same 50-50 paint wash on the side veneers. I painted the feet in full strength paint. And then I did a second coat on the frame, making sure to bring that color into the body of the piece. 
so that when the drawers were sitting in place, everything would look nice. Then I very carefully added the full strength paint to the outer portion of the drawer veneers, defined by those cool router lines. Those outer sections of veneers on the drawer fronts are the most delicate, the most fragile, the most at risk of, of chipping and releasing and failing. And so not only is this going to, of course, cover up the fact that we had to do some repairs on those drawer fronts, it's going to give extra protection for them and kind of provide like a guard rail, like a guard moat around those center pieces. Okay, back to more paint wash. I added the 50-50 wash to the top of the piece and watch as it just kind of softens up that top. Here I'm spraying just a tiny mist of water, just enough to make sure I can keep moving that paint wash around until I get it to spread nice and evenly over the top. Okay, can we talk about the inside of these drawers? Wow, that is hot, hot orange, right? Especially when you start to see it against the more mellow paint wash. Yes, this had to be dealt with. Seeing the drawers after the paint washing, I decided I needed to sand all of the insides of the drawers. Well, I sanded their inside walls and I gave their bottoms just kind of like a clean sanding, a little scuff sanding, removing any stubborn residue. Then I did that same paint wash to the outsides and insides of those drawers and I painted the bottoms of them in full strength paint. I let the drawers dry overnight and the next day I added this beautiful paper with this gorgeous print of kind of lavender peonies that I think will be really perfect with our paint washed veneers and for what I had in mind for some new special accents coming up in a sec. So for those special accents, I made a tracing of both of the routed veneer sections where the lead paint accents had originally been, and I gave them to a local artist I had hired. Well, coaxed, okay, arm twisted, to, to do a little bit of painting for me. There she is. She's asking if I can put that on its back, and absolutely I can. Together we mixed up some colors and after she used the tracing for a little practice, she began to add a hand-painted detail.
watching my daughter Ellie check her iPhone to look at the picture of the original artwork as a reference was somehow moving to me. The person who painted the original flowers probably did so almost 100 years ago. And here was my girl, 15 years old, born in the 21st century, doing her very best to honor the spirit of the original artist. Isn't life amazing? Ellie and I chatted about it and I told her, hey, you're, you're kind of connected to that artist now. She thought that was kind of cool. She also explained to me that she's not really a painter. She's a, a, a sketch artist, really. She likes to draw. She uses pens and pencils and doesn't really do a lot of painting. So I was very, very grateful to her for just being such a great sport and giving this a try. I could have used a stencil, of course, but I don't know. This just seemed more appropriate somehow. Once she was done, I filled in around the floral details with more of that Algonquin, and then I did the scariest part yet on this project. I did a paint wash over the top of Ellie's artwork. These had dried for a full 24 hours, but there's always a point at which water will reactivate another water-based product. So even though I was mostly sure all would be well, this was still mildly terrifying. I did about three coats of paint wash and I did the same thing on the drawers flowers. I did that with the drawer upside down so that any drips would go onto that solid paint. The wash of course is going to help kind of just tone those floral accents down just a little bit so that they, you know, kind of blend a little bit more. Phew, okay. Finally, time to top coat. I grabbed some Tough Coat in Matte by Fusion Mineral Paint. I'm really liking this top coat, by the way. And using my Zebra Wedge Brush, I painted on two coats over the entire piece. Now you may be noticing those black marks still in the corner. I decided that instead of trying to bleach them out, which is definitely a choice, I would try to do a different kind of cosmetic fix after the first coat of top coat dried, and I'll show you that in a sec. So after that first layer of top coat dried, I mixed up some Algonquin and a little bit of a darker brown together. And then I did basically what I think of as, you know, using concealer to just very subtly kind of tone down these dark black marks on the top. When I do this, I use very little paint. It's just the tiniest little dabs of paint. And then I use my finger to kind of just blot and blend them into the surface. My goal is not to have them disappear completely. That's not going to happen, but more just to really kind of soften their impact visually. Just kind of take them down a little bit. So do you remember those original pulls? Well, they also had been chemically stripped and sanded, and they were now ready as well to get two good layers of Algonquin.
Okay. Do you remember our little bit of lead friend? Scratched and stained. Chipped and gunked up. With some hazardous accents that sadly could not stay. Well, here she is, now. Welcome to the 21st Century Kid. Repaired and refreshed in her beige wash, our new neutral is giving us the best of those old veneers. Outlined in full strength paint, they almost seem to glow with the warmth of agate or rose quartz. And while that old top still isn't perfect, its signs of age have been blurred and softened by its perfectly toned treatment. But perhaps sweetest of all to me, those simple and lovely hand-painted accents added by a young emerging artist. And what was old is new again. Round and round we go. So how much did my ageless little friend cost me? Well, the dresser of course was free. I used about $10 worth of that chemical stripper, another $10 of that paint. I used about half of the roll of wallpaper, so another $10 for that. The artist's fee was $35. Not too bad, going right into the college account. I'll throw in another $10 for sanding paper, glue, rags, top coat, etc., bringing my total out-of-pocket cost to $75. So what might I list this one for? Well, as you know, it is not perfect. It still is showing signs of its age, and it's a smaller chest of drawers, not a full-size dresser. So I think a list price of $385 sounds about right. So what did you think? Are you a fan of the tan or were you down for the brown? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Ugh. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this sweet little dresser's new 21st century modern neutral makeover. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future hazardous materials discoveries or hand painting heroes. I still really want to do that white one. I really want to do the bridal one. Still really want to. I don't know. What do you think? Should I try Is that? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. What do you think? Leave me a comment about that one too. Should I try? Should I try to tackle all that lead paint? Nah. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.